Hey everybody, I'm Mason with MGA Chair Extreme, and today we're going to be discussing how we get our flyers to be flexible and also how we want the flyers to pull body positions. Before beginning this, you need to make sure that you're wearing shoes because if you're not wearing shoes, that's an unrealistic expectation of what it's going to feel like. And then you also want to make sure that you are warming up properly beforehand. So I'm going to take you through three phases essentially, the warm up, the body positions, and then increasing flexibility. When you get to that increasing flexibility stage, you want to make sure you're holding everything for one minute total, whether you need to split that into two 30 second sections or doing the full minute. We want you to eventually get to where you can do the full minute for those. When you're doing anything, you want to make sure that you're doing it on both sides so that you're getting a good even level of flexibility across both sides, both legs, and then that will make you the most complete cheerleader you can be. Today I have Morgan Hill with me. She's going to be my athlete demonstration because I am not as flexible as her. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how we have our flyers trained for body positions. The very first thing we do for our warm up to get them ready to start pulling body positions are front kicks and back kicks. What this does is it's a dynamic stretch that allows the flyers to get their bodies warmed up, ready to go to do the body positions. And it also ends up building flexibility in the long run, but it allows you to be able to warm warm up without stretching those muscles out completely to where you're just flimsy like a rubber band. So like I said, the first thing we'll start with is a front kick. And what we'll do with that is you need to make sure you have something beside you that you can hold on to, whether that be a wall, a counter, a couch, a chair, it doesn't matter. The goal here is just so you can hold on to that to keep yourself upright the entire time and make sure that you're able to stay in this tall position as opposed to leaning like that. Because a lot of times when we're doing those kicks, we will end up leaning if we don't have something to brace ourselves on. So that is first step there. Second step is we're going to have that arm. We're going to put it up by our head, okay, because that's going to be where we want to kick that foot to eventually. We're trying to kick that foot up to our hand, never reaching down to grab the foot, okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drive our leg up. And when we do this, we're going to do it for five eight counts. We're going to kick on one and five of each eight count. So we're going to do like two eight counts with Morgan, and then I'm going to tell you things you can look out for. Ready, five. And five, six, seven, kick. One, two, three, kick. Five, six, seven, kick. One, three, four, five, seven. Very good. Okay, so some things that you want to look out for in this. A lot of times that support leg that you're standing on will give a little soft bend in that knee. We do not want that to happen because what that's telling us is when you kick a stretch, when you're on a stunt, that knee's going to buckle, then the stunt's going to get really heavy for your bases, or worst thing that could happen is you would fall off the front of that stunt. We do not want that. Okay. Next thing is the foot. We want the foot staying straight to the front. If that foot turns out sideways, same thing like I just said, it's going to make it hard on the bases because that foot's going to be fighting against them. And what we tell them to do. Another thing is not kicking aggressively. When you are kicking, you want to kick aggressively, as aggressively as you can, and still avoiding bending that knee. Okay, so those are the three biggest mistakes we see. Make sure you're fighting to keep those from happening. The next thing that we're going to get into are the back kicks of the dynamic warm up. For the back kicks, you will turn and you will face whatever object you have. And whether, like I said, whether that be a wall, chair, whatever, you're going to face that object. Your hands are going to go on that object. The key here is to make sure you stand up tall. Once again, the same thing with the front kicks. We want to stand up tall. We want to stand up tall for the back kicks. You want to keep that chest up. And when you're driving that leg back, you want to try to maintain that position so that you're getting ready to do that kick scorp, kick needle that we all want. As you are kicking that leg up, your goal should be to drive your heel to the ceiling as hard as you possibly can. You want to do this with a straight leg. Even though you might not be kicking a straight needle, you should still prepare your body with a straight leg so that you're getting the best stretch possible. Keep that toe pointed and keep your knee as you are locking it, pushing to the back to keep that leg nice and stiff. Stay on the balls of your feet. And once again, you'll be doing this for five eight counts. We will do two eight counts to show you what it looks like. Ready. Five, six, seven, kick. One, two, three, kick. Five, seven, kick. One, three, four, five, seven. Once you're getting more advanced for those back kicks, we're going to also have you put the arm up for those. So that arm is going to go up behind the head just like it normally would. And that's going to prepare you for that kick scorpion that we're all wanting. So what that looks like is this. So the one hand is still bracing you. The left hand is up or the right hand, depending on if you're go what side you're going to. And the back kicks are the exact same. So we're going to go two eight counts of these. Ready? 
five, six, seven, kick, one, two, three, kick, five, seven, kick, one, three, four, five, seven. Okay, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a better stretch. You're gonna feel it more in that lower back because that arm is forcing you to stay up even taller than you normally would with your hands on the object. So the next thing we do after those kicks, we move into some static stretching. It's not a deep stretch because that's what we're gonna do after we pull the body positions, but it is just something to get your muscles fully warmed up and actually ready to go. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get into some splits. Okay, so we're gonna have her face that way so that you can see the lines with her. So we're gonna start with a runner's lunge to talk about a proper runner's lunge. So go ahead and get into a runner's lunge like on the ground. Yeah, like how we would warm up. So the biggest thing for the runner's lunge, it's not a time to chill, okay? The goal here is to make sure the toe is in front of the knee because once that knee starts going past that toe, you're not gonna get a stretch anymore. And to push your hips into that front foot to make sure you're getting a stretch there, okay? Once you do that, you can straighten your leg, close the knee to give yourself a little bit more time to get your body ready to go into that split, okay? So she'll go down, who that, that happens there. And then we go into a split. So go ahead and slide into a split for me. The biggest thing you want to look for in your splits, making sure your hips are squared to the front and then keeping both hands, one on either side. People that turn this way, now my hips are going to turn and my hands are also going to be in the wrong spot. Okay, so we're trying to keep a nice pretty straight line and then if you're looking at this back leg, you'll notice the laces are on the ground, the knee is on the ground and the top of that thigh is on the ground. Everything is on the ground and it's a pretty line. When we start turning our leg out like that, we're no longer preparing ourselves for good strong lines in our body positions. So making sure you're doing your splits the correct way is the way that you will build the flexibility needed for the body positions. So after we get done with the splits, we're gonna move into a bridge and also an elbow bridge. That's gonna help you prepare for your kick scorpions that you're gonna be doing. So Morgan, go ahead and hop into a bridge for me. So the first thing is just gonna be a regular bridge. You're gonna bridge up. You're gonna drive your chest over those wrists with those legs nice and straight and pretty. You're creating that open shoulder movement to make sure that you're able to get that good open shoulder for that kick scorp. Then you're gonna go down to your elbows. Okay, when you do that, you're gonna try to do the same thing, driving those shoulders as far as you can over. And if you'll notice, her hands are now in a very good position to grab that foot for that kick scorpion. When you're coming to tryouts, we will expect you to be able to do these things on the stunt stand. We're going to have the stunt stand ready to go for if you tell us, I am a flyer, then we will pull the stunt stand out for you and you will show us eight body positions. You will show us normal stretch, opposite stretch, bow and arrow, scale, arabesque, scorpion, kick scorpion, and needle. You will show us all eight of those things. If you cannot do a certain amount of those things or a couple, whatever, we will put NA for not applicable so that we know that you could not do that specific body position. You'll be rated out of three, one being the low and then three being the high. When you're starting this, you will not be as flexible as Morgan. Morgan has been doing this for a very long time and it's taken her a long time to get to this level of flexibility. So don't be discouraged when you first start because we all have to start somewhere. You have to take that first step on your goal of becoming more flexible. Something that we like to do before heel stretches are real front stretches where we're putting both hands on that foot. And it is something that we do use in our routines from time to time just to give that A, different kind of visual, and then B, it does help kids hold that foot up who might not be as flexible. So for a regular front stretch, we're gonna put both hands on the foot side by side like this. We don't want another hand over here, we don't want it under, we don't want any, we want it just like that, holding that foot. So Morgan's gonna demonstrate both front stretches for us. She's going to do the normal one first and then we'll do the opposite one so you can see that both of them will look similar ready here we go same thing kick one slam one five six seven kick one two three four five seven slam one and now the other one ready five six seven kick one two three four five seven slam one So when you are beginning, you will start with just your normal leg heel stretch. And what we're looking for on that for 99% of the cheer industry is you are going to be standing on your right leg. Your left leg is going to be the one that comes up to your head. Okay. When you're doing this, we're going to ask that you bring back your bracer, whether that be your wall, your desk, your chair, it doesn't matter what that bracer is. That bracer is going to come back and it's going to allow you to make sure you're not falling over and wobbling while you're 
learning. When that stretch is coming up, no longer are we pulling heel stretches out here. Okay, heel stretches are now to the front. We're gonna make sure you're looking at the bottom of that shoe and you're able to hold it in front of you. A heel stretch is pretty much a front stretch without your second hand being on that foot. You're going to see a change in Morgan's because Morgan has very short legs and pretty long arms, so her arm is gonna be bent like this and holding that because she is flexible and she is very special. So when you do it, it might not look like that. Your arm might be locked out because you might have short arms and long legs. Who knows? It doesn't matter. It, what matters is where that leg is going. Okay, so right now, Morgan is going to hold on to that chair. She's going to drive that leg up, kick that heel stretch. Be on the next one for my intermediate people. Once you're starting to learn and you feel like you can start letting go, you'll add that high V in. If you're not ready for the high V, don't hold, kick the high V or drive the high V up. You're going to just hold that chair. So the way it's going to look is she's going to kick her heel stretch on one. She's going to high V on the next one. She's going to slam on the next one. And then she's going to hold that stiff position until five. This is what that looks like. And five, six, seven, kick. One, two, three, four, five, seven, slam. One, sorry, three, four, five, seven, slam. One, hold, three, four, five. And that's when you can relax. So now that we're done and we're able to do the body positions without the bracer, we're going to talk about how we actually want the body positions done when you come into us for tryouts or when you come onto a team or when we're training school teams. Either way, we're going to show you exactly how we like our body positions done. So we're going to start with a normal leg heel stretch. Once again, that's standing on your right leg, driving your left leg up, and she's going to do that with her hand in a blade and it's going to be tight by her side. We like this because it's a lot less movement and it's going to be a lot cleaner. Not to say that the high V is wrong. We still use the high V in certain situations and we use the high V as a, an additional motion. But when we're just doing body positions, we really like that arm nice and tight by the side to give that nice clean look. So when you're going to do this for tryouts or even when you're practicing, we're going to do it for one eight count. You're going to kick that leg on one. You're going to hold until you slam on the next one and then you will relax on five. That looks like like this. Five, six, seven, kick. One, two, three, four, five, seven, slam. One, hold, three, four, five. The next thing that we're gonna to wanna to see is an opposite leg heel stretch. Now you will stand on your left leg and you will kick your right leg up. Nothing else changes, the blade is still by your side, the timing, the counts, everything is the same. It should look the same as your other leg heel stretch because both legs should look identical because we're doing both leg kicks to get a nice symmetrical level of, of flexibility. So here we go, Morgan, and five. Five, six, seven, kick. One, two, three, four, five, seven, slam. One, hold, three, four, five. So now we're gonna move into our back flexibility portion of body positions. We're gonna start with the scorpion. For the scorpion, it has to happen within half an eight count because if you're standing there for an entire eight count trying to pull a body position, it's going to take away an entire eight count from your sequence and that is not good. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna be standing on our right leg as normal. Then we're going to drive up our right hand to behind our head for two counts. We're gonna hold that one, two as we're reaching for our left leg on that one, two. So that happens on one, two, we're going to then drive our left hand and leg up to our right hand on three, and then we're going to extend to our scorpion on four. Wherever you can get your scorpion at on four is good. Okay, what you want to do is you want to aim for as flexible as you possibly can look on that, but we all start somewhere once again. So Morgan is going to show you what that looks like. You're going to hold that until you slam on one, and then you can relax by five. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, hit four, five, seven, slam, one, hold, three, four, five. For the kick scorpion, you'll be facing the side as normal, standing on your right leg. You're going to act like you're doing our back kicks that we showed you how we warm up. You're going to drive that foot up to the ceiling and try to keep it as straight for as long as you can and then bend it when you have to to make that connection with your hands. That kick happens on one and then you should extend your foot on two to whatever scorpion that you have that you can show. So right now, Morgan's gonna turn face to the side She's going to do a kick scorpion for us. You are going to hold that until one, and then that'll be when you slam, and then you can relax on five. Five, six, seven, kick. One hit, two, three, four, five, seven, slam. One, hold, three, four, five.
The next body position that you're going to get into is going to be a scale. When you do that scale, you're going to aim for closer to your knee than your foot because what that's going to allow you to do is going to allow you to straighten the leg. A lot of times when we're starting out, we're not as flexible and we all, for whatever reason, try to grab for the foot. Grabbing for that foot is going to make you have to be a lot more flexible when you're extending that out because it's going to shoot you straight up in the air. So when you get more flexible, you can go closer and closer to your foot slash ankle. But in the beginning, you're going to want to go at least mid shin because that's going to allow that long flexibility look of that locked leg. We do not want a bent leg here. You're going to get to use your bracer for this as well. And then eventually you can come off of that bracer. So what that looks like with a bracer is this. You're going to grab with your right hand on the bracer. And then as you kick your leg up, you are going to grab on one. You're going to extend your leg on two. And you're going to hold that position until the next one when you slam. And then you will hold until five and you can relax. That looks like this. Grab one, hit two. Ready? And five, six, seven, eight, one, hit two, three, four, five, seven, slam, one, hold, three, four, five. Okay, so you'll notice that she grabbed a little high. That was what I was talking about. She can do that because she's been doing it for a very long time and she's very flexible. Do not think you have to grab in that same spot. You can always grab lower in the beginning. Now that our bracer is gone, we're going to have to be doing our own bracing with our foot. So what's going to happen is we'll be facing the side and then we are going to have right hand on hip on one as we're grabbing our shin with our left hand. So we're in this position and then we extend both hands and leg on two. We hold that until we slam on one and then can relax on five. That looks like this. Five, six, seven, eight, one hit, two, three, four, five, seven, slam, one, hold, three, four, five. The next thing we're gonna work on is the arabesque. When you're doing the arabesque, we have it a little bit lower now, and that's just to make it a little bit more natural for the flyer. So how we're gonna do this is we're going to hold on to the bracer again. We're going to drive our arabesque leg up on one. And once again, as another disclaimer, this is all standing on your right foot, kicking your left foot for right now. So we're gonna drive that leg up on one to at least level. And then for once you get better at that, for my intermediate advanced people, we're gonna drive that leg past level hyperextended on five. We're going to hold that until we slam on one and then relax on five. That looks like this. Ready, five. Five, six, seven, kick, one, two, three, up, five, seven, down, one, hold, three, four, five. For the arabesque, we're going to want a good strong T here. Something that you have to think about when you're doing that is when you start doing this, you're going to have the tendency to want to pull that arm or those arms back. We do not want that. We want to hold a T. When you do it, if you'll go slightly in front of your body, that's going to help you stay more rounded in and be able to hold that position better, you're going to kick that leg exactly as you did with the bracer. You're going to drive that leg at least to level on one, two, hold three, four. Then you're going to hyperextend that leg on five, six, seven, eight, slamming on one and then holding into the next five. That looks like this. A key here is to also make sure you're looking to the front for an arabesque because this is a skill that typically leads into a twisting dismount. So you need to make sure you're keeping that performance going on with the judges. Ready, and five, six, seven, kick, one, two, three, lift, five, seven, down, one, hold, three, four, five. The next thing we're going to do is the bow and arrow. We're going to do this by kicking our side stretch is what we're going to call that because it's going to be turned a little bit to the side to allow us to get that full range of motion for the bow and arrow. We're going to kick that on one. We're going to punch on three and then we're going to extend on four for that bow and arrow. You're going to hold that until one and when you slam and then you're going to relax by five. Here we go. And five, six, seven, kick one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, one, hold three, four, five. And now for our final body position, we're going to go into a needle. When you're pulling a needle, it's very important, especially when you're in the beginning. The goal is not to try to pull your leg as far as you can over your head. The goal is to go for a straight pointed leg. So when you're doing it, you don't have to be super far over your head. Once you get to a certain level of flexibility and after you can do a straight leg, then you can worry about how far you can pull it. So when you're doing it in the beginning, 
All you have to focus on is locking that knee. Driving that leg locked will give you a needle. Then you can start working on a hyperextended needle and pulling it farther over your head. Just make sure that you're thinking about that when you're going through, because so many times we see people trying to really drive that leg over their head, but it's not locked. So you have to try to get to that locked position. Morgan is gonna show us how we're gonna get into it. We're gonna do it the exact same way we'd go into a regular scorpion, and you wanna be locked out at that needle by five. You're gonna hold that until you slam on one, and then you can relax on five. That looks like this. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, seven, slam, one, hold, three, four, five. So after you've pulled your body positions and done all of your kicks, you're then going to move into building flexibility and trying to get more flexible. So what we have here is what we typically use at the gym, which is a panel mat, but you might not have a panel mat. You'll have a couch cushion. You'll have a couch itself. You can use whatever you want to elevate your foot to do over splits. Over splits fantastic because that really opens it up and makes you have to get a good deep stretch for it. So you would typically do this on both legs. Morgan is going to show this on one leg. So Morgan, go ahead and get into how you would get into an oversplit. That front leg goes up. Make sure you're pointing that toe and then that will make it to where you're building that muscle memory for when you actually pull stretches. Your goal is to try to go as low as you possibly can. As you can see, Morgan would need something higher. You can always stack up and go higher and higher to make it where it's more difficult and challenging for you so that you can continue to build that flexibility based off of where you are. The next thing we're going to use is a door frame to help you when you're getting into your needles and your scorpions to help that back really get stretched out and allow you to start feeling how it should feel. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand in the door frame. We're going to split up on the door frame and then we're going to use the other side to use our hands to walk up as far as we can to really get that back engaged and to get ready for a needle as you can see. So the next thing we're gonna show you is using a wall to help with your splits and flexibility. So what Morgan's gonna do is she's going to get against the wall for me. She's going to split against the wall, using her hands to push inwards and trying to really open up those shoulders and get that nose as close as she can to the wall. Then she'll allow herself to walk out from the wall a little bit. And that will allow her to get a nice stretch through her back. And then this is a more advanced thing, obviously. So as you're doing this, work up to it. But really try to get that nice, straight pointed leg there and hold good positions. Something non-flexibility related that you need to work on as a flyer is you have to understand that you can't just be small or just be flexible. You have to be strong. So another thing we can do is we can work on those hip flexors. You can do that by sitting on your butt doing straddle leg lifts. Or if you want to do it with more flying based things, what you can do is you can take another elevated thing. So we're using a chair in this instance. You'll put your foot up on the chair and then you will keep it nice and straight and pointed. And you're going to lift that foot up as high as you can up and down for sets of five at a time. So Morgan will go ahead and put that foot up there for me, point that toe nice and hard, keep it locked, and you're going to lift that. You can touch it on the chair if you want to make it easier, and you're just doing lifts like that. You'll notice after you do these for a couple sets, it gets pretty difficult because that hip flexor starts hurting. So make sure you're working that as much as you can to try to build that muscle for when you're pulling and holding body positions.